In this segment, we'll cover the 15.2 miles of the very popular, and with good reason, Highline Trail. The trailhead is at Logan Pass. We'll start by traversing the garden wall. Three and a half miles later, we'll climb the formation called the Haystack. At the halfway point, we'll get refreshed at Granite Park Chalet. Then we'll cross the Continental Divide and take in the view that makes this hike special. Then we'll hike down 2,300 feet past several lakes to the journey's end at the Swift Current Motor Inn. The trailhead is across the Sun Road from the Logan Pass parking lot. A signpost reminds us that more than 15 miles will be hiked before dinner tonight. This is bear country. There are more than 500 grizzlies in the park. And as the sign says, there is no guarantee of your safety. With an incredible view of the valley below, the trail drops quickly 200 feet to a shelf blasted into the several thousand foot high garden wall. It's so narrow that you have to stop to let other hikers by. It may seem scary, but it's not. In part because there's a handy garden hose covered safety cable to cling to. The trail is hundreds of feet above the Sun Road at this point, so you can still hear the traffic as it winds its way down the valley. It's not until you get off the shelf and look back that you see just how massive the cliff face is. But it's the view across the valley where you will most likely cast your gaze. Soon, you're off the cliff face, and the trail opens up. A bit. Bears aren't the only wildlife feeding here. Bighorn sheep like it too. Across the valley, the 492-foot Bird Women Falls comes into view. The trail cuts across the safety of a scree field. Then you're back in the trees where bear precautions are necessary. Some wear bells on their boots, but most rangers think they're not loud enough. Talking, singing, or generally making noise is deemed the best way to let a bear know that you're coming. Some of the smaller creatures of the park may come out in hopes that you'll toss them a crumb or two. But don't. It's best to keep wild animals wild. The trail continues along the garden wall. And by now, you can no longer hear the road below. It's only natural to spend most of your time looking down the trail. But the view up is also impressive. This is a place where you can truly be surrounded by the magnificence of Mother Nature. It's easy to understand why the big mountain in the distance is called Heaven's Peak. At this point, we're only about an hour from Logan Pass. And you can see some amazing scenery without too much effort. And you can turn around whenever you want. Again, you never know what you're going to see on the Highline Trail. Here, a mountain goat family grazes next to the trail. Now, these goats may seem cute and docile, and most of the time they are. But they, like all wild animals, are unpredictable, and it's best to keep your distance. The trail is pretty flat for the next mile and a half. The view is anything but. There are few trees or fellow hikers this far out, and now it's just you and the mountains. At about the three-mile point, there's another grove of trees, beyond which there's another shelf carved into another cliff face. If you don't have the time to do the whole trail, this is a great place to stop and take in the scenery before heading back. Notches in the cliff make excellent picnic spots. They're a great place to take in the McDonald Valley, while resting up for the several hundred foot climb up the haystack. This is also a great place to interact with other trail users. Most are friendly but some will insist that you get out of their way. It seems here even wildlife enjoy the incredible panorama. When you see hikers heading the opposite way, it's a good idea to ask them if they've seen anything up ahead. Any uh, sheep or anything over there? There are three nice big rams right up here on the trail. The cliff face is only a couple hundred yards long. Then there is a clearing. In this case, bighorn were grazing in the clearing. Bighorn sheep are the symbol of the park, and it's a treat to see just one and you're really lucky when you see several doing what Bighorn do. The open space and lush grass attracts other grazers as well. Here, predators such as bears can be seen with plenty of time to get out of the way. However, some grazers think it's safer on the rocky ledges. Well, usually they're right. But seconds before this video was shot, this bear was chasing a goat. The goat got away. Bears are omnivores. That means they'll eat just about anything. They also can be territorial. This mama bear has a cub. 
in which he finds an area with plenty of her favorite food, berries, she'll defend the area for her family. These bears are about a thousand feet above the trail, but these animals can run at 35 miles an hour. And when you see a grizzly heading your way at, and you're 90 minutes away from the nearest road and a few hours away from any medical help, you're glad that you're not the slowest person on the trail. Luckily, this bear was just checking us out. Right about here, the crew had a little problem. This was the last shot we got with the HD camera, but we were prepared, at least a little bit. The rest of the hike was shot with our standard definition backup camera. The climb to the haystack is about 250 feet over two switchbacks. About 10 minutes later, we are at the top. That's Heaven's Peak in the distance and McDonald Creek to the left. Here, there's evidence of an old forest fire. In the distance, you can see a large burn area from 2003, when dry conditions and lightning strikes caused fires that burned much of the park. After rounding a bend at the six mile point, Granite Park is visible. It's a welcome sight because you can purchase something to drink and even a snack to augment your personal supply. Before you get to the lodge, there's a spur trail to the Grinnell Glacier Overlook. If you decide to take the trail, it will add about 1.2 miles to the hike and another 1,000 feet of up and down. This is the view from the overlook. You are standing exactly on the Continental Divide. It's a lot of work to get up here, but the view is spectacular. The chalet is the halfway point. It's about seven and a half miles from Logan Pass. It's a good place to rest and to meet fellow hikers. More importantly, you can buy water and food here. This is also one place where you might actually get cell phone coverage. Oddly, the shop contains a fridge, but there is no electricity. Also oddly, the prices are reasonable, but there's no trash collection here. So you have to pack out whatever you purchased. The chalet also provides primitive accommodations. You have to supply your own bedding and provide and cook your own meals. The trail to the pass leads past the bunkhouse. Several trails meet here and a signpost will point you in the right direction. There's a 500 foot climb to Swift Current Pass and you may be sharing the trail with a few bighorn sheep. After eight miles and this latest climb to 7,200 feet, you may get a little tired, but it's all downhill from here. But going downhill, as we said, is actually harder on the body than going uphill, as I was soon reminded. Ah, I was very close, hurt my right knee. Perhaps due to being tired or my painful knee, well, I was in need of a boost. And I got one. Tiredly, I'll explain. Well, that's what I came to see. This view. And I was tired. Didn't expect that last bit of up, 500 feet or so up. But the view is beginning to be there. And uh, I can't wait to get a little further down the road. Feeling better. Heart rate's getting back down to 125. Nice cool breeze in my back. Sunny. It's a good day. After nine miles, I'm coming up to the view I've come to see. It's amazing. I'm at over 7,000 feet, looking 2,000 feet down a valley that was carved by a glacier 12,000 years ago, leaving a chain of beautiful lakes. In addition, I can faintly hear the sound of 3,000 foot waterfalls. This is a special place. There is no other way to see this. You have to hike here. You'll have to endure exhaustion, blisters, and pain while hauling yourself, your sustenance, and your cameras for eight hours to see this. They say that you appreciate things more when you earn them, and they're right. After crossing yet another shelf, you're close to the falls. If anything, the view only gets better.
The falls begin at a melting glacier. This trickle will soon join others, forming the Swift Current River. The meltwater converges and begins its journey to the Arctic Ocean. In 10 to 20 years, the glacier will be gone, and this stream bed will be dry for much of the summer. Then local wildlife will have to look elsewhere for this vital fluid that we take so much for granted. Almost daily, bears use this trail to cross the divide, so you need to be alert. That was dried bear scat. A couple of suspension bridges help you cross a couple of creeks. At this point, I'm not stopping as often to look at the scenery, but I made an exception at Red Rock Falls. It's just a short walk off the main trail. They also tell us that there's only 1.8 miles to the end of the trail. This is the last large lake, and while it's beautiful and it would be nice to stay and appreciate it, I do so only briefly. It's been a long day, and I'm much more interested in basking in the unabashed luxury of a sparse TV-less room with my boots off. A few minutes later, eight hours after starting out, but carrying a lifetime of memories with me, that's what I did.